Hi everyone and welcome to Asami Rat Care. So today's video is actually going to be the start of a bit of a series of um, videos. Um, I originally did have a go at filming this as one big long shot, um, but very quickly discovered that I rambled far too much and didn't feel like I got into depth on anything in particular. And um, because I like to ramble, as you've probably picked up from watching these, um, I thought I would do kind of a separate series of videos. So the topic for this is all about floor coverings and actually substrates in particular and why we use them and so on. So this video is going to be very much about the why and the what kind of things to consider. And then what I'm going to do in future videos is go through some of the main different types of substrates out there, tell you a little bit about them and um, get into some of the debates about them <laughs> potentially as well, um, particularly with things like shavings and hay. Um, and such which um, get some bad press, um, some of it deserved, some of it not deserved. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about that while we're at it. Um, but yes, yeah, so today let's just focus primarily on floor coverings and why we need them. So you'll all kind of get a cage and cages generally come either with a deep tray or sometimes the kind of flat plastic floor, um, very shallow tray. And some cages also have um, a grill um, of some description. So um, one of the things that we need to consider is how we're going to cover that floor. And some people have, have thought, but why do I need to? I mean, they've got a litter tray, they can just wander around on the floor. And the reason is all to do with urea. Um, our old friend urine and how rats, <laughs> sorry if we have a small escaping rat, um, rats do like to mark and they do like to urinate wherever they go and we, what we've got to do with that is we've got to make sure that that urine is locked away and the reason is if, if a rat urinates on a surface other than the fact it's smelly for us it's also smelly for them that kind of urea will evaporate off and that will irritate the respiratory tract and even if you're wiping down regularly um, it can be multiple times a day it will still build up um, you notice um, if you've watched the video on my rat smell, what do I do? I talk a lot about plastic shelves as that and they are killers for it. But actually, if you don't have anything in the cage other than the occasional litter tray, or even then some people don't even have that, then you immediately have a problem. So we need some sort of substrate and, and substrate is a fancy word for kind of a loose floor covering of some, some sort. We need something there to absorb that urine and lock it away. And that's quite important. Um, so you can have things that absorb it um, but then they just let it go straight, pass straight through them. Um, that's no good. What we want is it to be locked, sealed away, um, so that when we come to cleaning it out, we can scoop it out, chuck it in the bin, and it's fine, or some other, some other kind of method of it. So that's um, thinking about the, the fundamental reasons. But that is just from a health point of view. There is actually a lot more to a substrate than that. Um, some people, or some probably institutes is more accurate, will use gratings as a means of locking the ure urea away. So they'll have the rats running around on mesh surfaces and then the urine or the droppings will drop through into some sort of litter before where they're cleaned out without them having to go into the cages and interact with the rats. Um, this is also not great. The reason it's not great is you'll have all heard about Bumblefoot. Now, contrary to popular internet rumour, <laughs> mesh floors on their own do not cause Bumblefoot. Um, they're not particularly comfortable for rats and in fact there's been really interesting scientific study that show, showed um, rats preference and rats will far prefer to stand on a flat solid floor over a mesh surface um, and and there is some circumstantial evidence that if a rat's already got something like bumblefoot it may make it worse and bumblefoot by the way is a let's get a little eclipse to demonstrate it's kind of a swelling on the back of the foot or the heel or um, the front feet, so you won't clearly see it because he doesn't have it, but it is something that um, will potentially cause him discomfort. It's quite a kind of purpley, bluey kind of swelling on the on the surface, and um, it's quite unpleasant. But that's primarily actually caused by being obese, um, poor genetics, kind of an unhygienic environment, etc. Um, the mesh themselves doesn't directly cause it, um, but it's still something that you should avoid and that is because rats don't particularly like it isn't good for them and the idea of the urine just dropping down and going through um, basically it will stick to all the crevices of the bars and it will get just as smelly as a solid surface in fact potentially more so because of the um, surface surface area is actually kind of quite substantial on mesh versus a flat surface so you don't want a mesh kind of floor you don't want a plain plastic floor because that won't lock away the urea so what are you going to cover the things with 
Now there are various options for this, um, some of them are good and some of them are bad and I'll go into depth about why I would recommend some options and why I would strongly not recommend some options. Um, but as well as this kind of health and hygiene point of view, there is one other very important consideration in there and that is um, enrichment as well. So one of the really important things with um, with substrate is it allows the rats to act as rats. So something that they can dig, that they can interact with, that they can forage in is really important from a psychological point of view because rats love to dig. I mean, you can even see it with them doing a bit of burrowing in my um, little kind of scarfy thing here. <laughs> Um, these are my two new boys, by the way, and I do say boys um, entire, unlike Mr. Burko. Um, they have joined the family. We have Sol here and we have Eclipse up here. Um, but yes, I have a boy group now. We will do a feature on boys at some point, I'm sure. Anyway, getting distracted. So we're talking about health and hygiene point of view and an enrichment point of view. So what then do we need to think about in terms of substrate? So there are, there are a number of, of key factors. That whenever I'm trying a new substrate, I try and assess things against and it's the things that matter most. So the first one for me is absorbency. So you want something that is quite absorbent. Um, and, and I will say there's a real range of absorbencies of substrates, different types of material, different ways it's prepared and so on. So absorbency is basically that ability to take in the urine and any other kind of fluids and even help dry out droppings and such and lock it away. So low level absorbency, you've got things like newspaper, it's crap. It just basically gets wet and damp and that's about it. It doesn't really lock anything away. Um, at the high end, you've got things like hemp and um, cat litter, you know, your, your paper based cat litters and such. Those are very absorbent. Um, what I will say is there are degrees in between and actually you don't want to necessarily go too high up the absorbency scale because when something's very absorbent, not only will it lock the urine away, but it'll actually start drawing moisture out of the air. And that can cause problems, particularly if you're breeding and you have very young kittens. Um, something that's very, very absorbent on the floor can cause something called ring tail. Um, ring tail is where they get hard and patch of scales around the tail and it basically can strangle the tail and cause problems. Um, not always a big deal in the UK where we have high humidity. In fact, I think rat room is typically about 65% <laughs> humidity at the moment. Um, but it is potentially an issue when you're um, in countries that are drier um, or um, even if you're kind of in a particularly um, dry part of the UK as well. Um, this time of year, it's not too bad around us. Um, but yes, so you don't want too, too kind of strongly um, kind of absorbent in some cases. I think corn cob is probably one of the really strong ones as well, but I'll mention that at some other point. Um, so that's your absorbency, but it is important. You want something that's reasonably absorbent, um, but not massively. And you can mix things up as well. So I have litter trays with cat litter in, and then I have other substrate that's slightly less absorbent in, in other areas as well. Um, rats do actually need slightly high humidity than, higher humidity than other humans, but not too high. If it gets too high, um, then it, it can cause problems in terms of breeding and so on. Breathing, sorry, rather than breeding um, and so on. So um, absorbency is very important. Next is quite important in terms of um, health as well. So that is you, you want something that's low dust and irritant. And I'm classing those together because um, dust is an irritant. Um, there are other irritants as well. You don't want anything that's too perfumed, strong smelling. Um, you don't want anything that's very chemically um, you generally want something that, and I do this as a test when I'm trying something out for a new thing, put it in a kind of small box, big plastic box that you can get your head into a bit, really whip it up a bit and then stick it in and have a big sniff. Don't do this if you're asthmatic, um, this would not be healthy, um, but tr try and see if there's anything that irritates you, any kind of strong smells, any kind of dustiness, anything that makes you want to sneeze. Um, because if you think about it, rats are running around very close to this substrate and they're spending the majority of their life on and around it. So they will be inhaling more of that. And we all know that a rat's respiratory tract is potentially quite weak. Um, so you definitely need to um, consider that as quite an important factor. And it's something that comes into all different um, types of kind of substrate. And it's particularly important if you've got a rat that is prone to respiratory problems. Um, what I will say with like dust and irritants is it's not something that I can say, right, 
that substrate over there is going to cause problems with all rats because actually what you can find is some rats got an absolutely fine with something and some other rats have a reaction to it. So quite a while ago I'd used um, Obios which is a kind of hemp bedding for a, a year or two, really good, getting on very well with it. Then I got a rat that did not get on very well with it which is amusing because I think her original breeder used it herself but for some reason she just got quite snotty around it. I swapped the Obios for something else and very quickly it her, her kind of snottiness disappeared and she never had another problem since and there's nothing wrong with obios it's a perfectly good substrate and um, it is a bit absorbent at times and um, it sits a bit flat for me but it, it, it is a, it is a great substrate um but the problem was very much that um it just irritated her and i've come across rats i use um, bedmax currently um in one of my cages and all my rats are absolutely fine with it not bothered at all um, somebody's rat came, rats came to stay recently and one of them has a problem with bed rats so I put them on card um, but it, it's one of those to bear in mind that just because one rat has an issue does not necessarily mean it's a bad um, bedding and just because all the other rats don't have an issue doesn't mean that it's suitable for that rat so dust and irritants is something you really need to think about um, the next thing that I think you need to think about is the enrichment factor. So for me, that's a combination of things like diggability. Um, does it dig well? Things that hold tunnels quite well go get go down very well with certain rats. Um, but the, and and I would say not every rat needs to be able to hold um, tunnels, but they do need to be able to dig and they need to be able to forage. Um, Another factor that can come into it as well is springiness. Um, so I really like, because I have quite tall cages with reasonably long drops, and as much as I do put things across to stop those drops, um, some rats have got a remarkable skill that managed to fall around all things from one to the other. Um, so what can be very useful is to have a substrate that's got a decent amount of spring to it, so when they do bounce it's a bit like a, a kind of trampoline and they don't hurt themselves. Um, so that is a factor to bear in mind as well and and all of these kind of different factors kind of add up and they will help you choose um, the right or the wrong substrate um, so I would also say that don't think that you just have to use one either um, I generally find trying a few different things is really valuable um, what is also very valuable is trying to mix them as well some of my um, best combinations over the years have been a mixture of two very different substrates and they've given me the benefits and the disadvantages but they've mostly sorted each other's disadvantages out and given me the benefits overall so it's definitely one to think about but yes so when you're thinking about substrate is yes they do need a floor covering they need a floor covering to cut down the amount of urea in the air and to try and make it a healthy and safe and hygienic environment for them um, you need to consider absorption so you need to make sure that you um, pick a substrate that can absorb and lock away the urine um, and the lock away is just as important as the kind of pulling it through and i'll explain that when we go into fleece um, at some point in the future so we need to make sure it's absorbent we need to make sure that it's low on irritants so low dust and um, does not affect our particular rats um, and also not strongly perfumed not full of um, kind of chemicals etc um, and then we need to think about enrichment factors so we need to think about can they dig in it can they forage in it does it provide that kind of natural environment for them to interact with in some cases they can nest with it as well quite enjoy that and that is is quite exciting for them um, and then the, the final thing is is other bits and pieces things like um, it's nice to have a bit of spring to it and actually that helps with the foraging point of view a bedding with good spring will let um, bits of food that you scatter feed on it fall down into it and make it better for foraging and usually better for digging as well but yeah so those are the main factors um, I'll shut up before I bore you to death on all of my thoughts on substrate and um, we'll come back and we'll look at some different substrate choices next so bye from me and from the boys who are now tunneling behind me um, see you next time